Growing up in central Virginia, uh, I was no stranger to the aftermath of the Civil War. The scars on the land, the monuments, the stories, the tall tales were commonplace. You can't go very far in central Virginia without still, even 160 years later, finding artillery trenches, infantry trenches, fort sites. There were trenches in my own front yard where I grew up. But some places are like the place where I am today. The land is healed. There are no monuments here, no trenches, no Civil War roads. But just under the surface, there are still the relics left behind by the boys in blue and gray who fought on this ground. I've been trying to find it here for a while. What do you say we give it a shot? <laughs> It's a nice, cool, overcast day here in Central Virginia. I've got a limited amount of time to hunt these places. While I can get in these fields, that's where I'm gonna be. No, it's lead. Melted campfire lead. Okay, happy with that to start off. In the right place. This is a little barnyard that's got a whole lot of trash in it. Just a big nail. I'd bet you dollars to donuts that's a Civil War bullet. There's my bullet. You see that three ringer right there. First bullet of the day. Um, oh my. That thing is deep. So let's take another lesson. In two, in two trips out here, I found 90 bullets. Yeah, I see it. Look at that little bit of glass. Nice three ringer. Uh oh. Well, would you believe it? There's more down here. There it is. They were laying right next to each other. Hmm. I think we are hearing more down there. Some very old glazed pottery. Oh yeah, there's more in here for sure. Number three out of that hole. Oh yeah, there's more in there. Look at the nose of that bullet sticking out. That's bullet number four out of this one hole. Five out of this one hole. We're not done. All right, what's that? That's a piece of lead, but it's, uh, it looks like it's been whittled on. Oh yeah, that is definitely whittled on bullet. So a soldier sitting in this tent was making something out of that or just randomly carving oh boy let me show you what I got I see green do you see green yeah it's not a military button but it is a flat button, probably is a English manufacturer flat button, dates to around the 1840s. We are finding bullets again today. It is a piece of a bullet. And you can easily see, that, that that's probably plow struck. And you can easily see the three rings and the shape of the Union mini ball. All right, we're not there yet. We sure are in the middle of a whole bunch of ants. Look at them crawling up my legs. Shoot, 
I'm gonna dig this one fast. Maybe a modern bullet. Man, I'm in a boatload of ants, I can tell you that. Whatever it is, I'm getting out of these ants because they're everywhere. In my gloves, crawling up my pant legs. Get off of me. On my boots. This one sounds definitely like iron junk to me. And it's kind of a jumpy signal. But sometimes you just dig those weird signals just because you need to learn what it is. Just a piece of nondescript farm iron, I think. Nothing else in there. That's just one that fooled me. I haven't closed that hole up yet because I'm getting signals around it. I think we've got deep bullets right there, or a deep bullet right there. Right there, we should be right on it. There it is. There it is. You see it, don't you? And there she is. Another one. Getting a signal here that is not a great signal, but being that close to those other bullets, I'm going to try it. Got a signal down in there, and a signal right there. <sighs> I see green right there. That is a button face, probably a little New York cuff. <sighs> yeah, there she is. All right. Oh, look at the black powder in the back of that bullet. Last person that laid their hands on that bullet probably buttoned that button. I've dug a button and probably six or seven bullets out of those two holes. And I got another signal right here. Yeah, that's a good bullet signal. Here's a bullet. Okay, there's your next three ringer. Oh no, there's another bullet, so that makes a dozen before lunch. That means that in the last three trips, so I found over a hundred bullets. We got a military button, and a flat button, and a dozen bullets. Got a good signal in the bottom of the hole. Imagine how many bullets were manufactured during the Civil War. Hmm. Camp lead. Boy, that's why it was so loud. I got a signal that turned out to be under this root, and I don't have my root cutter with me. Button? It's just a rivet washer. Hmm, dude's deeper than I thought it was. Let's go for a deep one. Every now and then I kind of bring you all up to speed. If you're new to the channel, I hunt with a Deus 1. I've heard the Deus 2 is even better. I find so much with the Deus 1. I'm satisfied with this machine right now. I can't think of any reason to change. That's heavy. There it is. Can you see that three ringer? Right there. Oh, is that aluminum? Yep. Look at that. So there you go. I got fooled. Reading in the high 80s. There it is. What is it? All right, there's a little round ball. That's not a 69 caliber. That's about a 45 caliber round ball. This one's bouncing around between high 70s and low 80s. Low, oh, there it is. And that's unusual for this farm in that it appears to be fired. I would guess a bullet, but maybe we can dig this one with our hands and watch it emerge after all these years. There it is. I feel something and I see a little bit of white. Eh, not too deep. What is that? Is that green? Shotgun shell. <laughs> First one of those today. Can't complain about that. I don't know what that is, but it's plastic and oh man aluminum that may be a piece of a broken toy or something shotgun shell somebody's cigarette pack I have not been able to pull out another button 
and I'm getting tired. I'm at that place where I've just about had it. Okay, here's my button. Everybody be watching for green. We got a button in this hole. Maybe, sorta. Mm. It still sounds like it could be a button. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I see green. Look right there. It has a shank on the back, or at least the remains of it. No, it's got a whole shank on the back. That's not even crushed. <gasps> I think that may be a Vermont. I'm not sure. <sighs> hmm. Oh yeah. That's a good looking button. It's just a little cuff size or vest size, but it, it's not bent, it's not pushed, it's got a shank on the back. That's a nice find. Got the two like deer on either side of a shield or something. It's funny as it's drying you can see more detail. Nice, 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 nice. All right, that has made my day. Still in the hole. Okay, still there. All right, there's a, what is that? Is that a three ringer? No, that's a Sharps carbine bullet. Is it a ring tail? Mm. What what the heck is going on with that right there? Yeah, that's a solid base bullet. So that's some kind of sharps. Some kind of sharps bullet there. But I don't know that I've ever seen one quite like that. Interesting little variant bullet there. It's a guessing game. I don't care how good your machine is. There are different metals that can mimic other metals. And I think it's a percussion cap, maybe? Okay, I think this sounds like a, a bullet. I see green, but is it enough green to be a button? I don't think so. Maybe a rivet? Yeah. It's a leather rivet. Hey, I'm really glad that you went relic hunting with me again today. Good day. Some good brass, some good bullets. I thought today I'd talk a little bit about buttons since we dug that beautiful Michigan. This camp that I'm hunting obviously had soldiers from lots of different places because I've found buttons from lots of different places. If you're a Civil War relic hunter, you are certainly familiar with the standard general service eagle button. This is the most common button to find from the Civil War. And it makes sense because you have a large group of Union soldiers, and if they were equipped federally, then they all got the same buttons, or pretty close. Sometimes we find an eagle button with an eye in the shield, such as this beautiful button with a lot of gold that I found in Cold Harbor. These are buttons made and usually issued pre-Civil War when they would mark them I for infantry, R for riflemen, A for artillery, D for dragoon, C for cavalry, that kind of thing. So they're a little bit more scarce because they were made pre-Civil War. This is a Union staff officer's button. And there's a little corrosion on this one, but it still has a lot of gold on it. It's just a pretty little staff officer's button. But getting back to this camp, I thought I'd show you some of the buttons that I've found in this camp. State buttons, specific to one state, obviously are more scarce. The most common state button that I find in Cold Harbor is the New York. This button came out of a sandy spot in the woods no fertilizer was in this ground and so it is preserved beautifully but i found a lot of new york state buttons on this camp another button that i found on this camp much less common 
but I found a few would be the Massachusetts, characterized by an arm with a sword in hand. I found this really poor condition main officer's button in this camp. And the only way I know it's main is looking at it through a jeweler's loop. I've also found quite a few Michigan buttons, like the one that I found today. Uh, that's not my first. It's one of my prettiest. Obviously, this tells you that there were soldiers there from Michigan, Maine, New York, Massachusetts. I found a Confederate uh, A for artillery button here hammered completely flat. My theory is they probably used it for a checker or a poker chip or something like that. I found one Virginia button. Very few Confederate relics came out of this camp, so I wonder if it was in a guy's pocket as a souvenir. It's in really rough condition as well. I want to show you a couple of other buttons that have come out of Cold Harbor that I've personally dug. I love the Connecticut button. The design is so intricate and beautiful. This one must have been heavily gold gilted. I found this one in the yard of my childhood home off of Cold Harbor Road where there were trenches in the front yard. One of the best buttons that I have personally dug is this beautiful AVC button, Alabama Volunteer Corps. And an AVC button, of course, is rarer, obviously, because it was only worn by an Alabama volunteer. Buttons will look different depending on the kind of soil you dig them out of. The ground does different things to them. Some buttons come out with a really pretty chocolate brown patina. Some are a beautiful green patina. Some still retain some of the gold gilt. Here's an eagle button that I actually dug out of a creek in Cold Harbor. And so it has almost a copper look to it. It's always fun to find buttons in the camp because that's something that a soldier had with him most likely for quite some time. He might have worn that button from Shiloh to Antietam to Gettysburg to Coal Harbor to Fredericksburg. You don't know where that button went. You don't know what that button saw. And so I love to dig buttons also because when I dig one, I can tell where the guy was from. It makes it a little more personal. I appreciate you guys who discovered the channel a couple of years ago and you've been very faithful. And I'll tell you, I read every last comment that you leave. I like to hear from you. I like to hear what particularly interests you. And if you have a question that I can answer, I enjoy doing that as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will subscribe to the channel. Until next Friday, when the next episode comes out, you be good and say your prayers.